Hello everyone, Joe here, and we're going to take a look at the benefits of actually editing a smartphone photograph in Lightroom Classic. This is actually um, an iPhone 13 Pro Max, and I got a feeling before we're done, we're actually going to want to send this into Photoshop as well. But let's go ahead and start our edit here in Lightroom. First of all, let's take a look at the image. Let's see. Uh, there we go. This This is the standard lens. This is the middle lens on the camera. So let's make it happen. So let's go to the develop module. In fact, I'm going to go full screen so we can have less distractions. Lovely shot of a place called Merrick Butte in Monument Valley. And you can see we're pretty sharp from way up close all the way back. Now, is it as sharp as a camera? Honestly, it isn't. Uh, you can take a look here, and you can see a little bit of haloing, a little bit of distraction here. And you can even see right here, right on this border, a halo, which is about to get a lot worse. So that's one of the things they're going to want to fix. So what's the problem? Well, the highlights are way too bright. Let's just bring them all the way down. We can open up the shadows a bit. Let's bring up the overall exposure. And I think we're going to have to start by, oh no, before we do that, let's add some vibrance and some saturation. And we have some color temperature problems in here as well. It's just uh, not doing that well. We're going to need to do some fixes everywhere on this. So let's come up to the masking panel. We'll start with the sky. And the sky was blue, so we need to give it some dehaze to bring the clouds back. And we do, okay, that's better. And let's, now that we've got that selected, let's make the sky a bit blue or not that blue. I'd say about something like that was about right. And if we zoom in again, let's hit enter on that. Let's zoom in again. And you can see now that there's a fair amount of grain and noise. And look what has happened to the halos. We're going to have to go into Photoshop to fix that. So let's zoom out. And as long as we're here, let's come down to detail. So I'm going to hit enter to be done with that mask. Let's go down to detail. Uh, the image does not need to be sharpened, and we don't have Lightroom's denoise on JPEGs from a phone. So what I'm going to instead do is go to Manual Noise Reduction. I'm going to bring Luminance up about halfway. I don't need to maintain any detail in the sky. And then the same thing with Color. Again, I am don't need any detail, and I'm, I'm going to make it smoother. Now let's zoom in on the sky, and that's not terrible. In fact, if we come up here and hide it temporarily... Look at the difference in the sky. I could live with that. That's not that's not too bad. So that's pretty good. So what other are the problems here? Well, the foreground, the color has gone way too orange. So we're going to create another mask. And let's create a linear gradient. I'm going to start about right here and come up to about there. I thought it was too orange. So what do we need to do? We need to take out yellow. So over towards the blue a bit, and maybe a little red out as well. And I think that's looking a little better, kind of the way I remember the place. And let's hit enter. But we've also kind of taken some of the life out of the image. So let's go back to our basic panel. Let's add some clarity. Oh, that looks a lot better. We'll add some texture as well. And do we want to add dehaze? I don't think yet, because that's going to start to bring up a lot of noise. Are there more things we could do in Lightroom? Yes, but the big problem we have is this halo around the formation. We're going to have to go into Photoshop to fix that. So the other stuff I want to do, I'm going to do in Photoshop as well. So let's go to Photo, Edit in, Photoshop, and hit Edit. So here's our image in Photoshop. So first thing we're going to do, Command or Control J to make a copy of the background. And what did I mention the problems are? Well, it needs some, it needs some life. It needs some contrast. It needs some light painting. So I'm going to create a blank layer and change it immediately from normal to overlay. This is the blending mode for the layer. You'll see what this is going to do in a second. I want to create a light path up to the image. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to get a brush. Just hit B. And holding down both Control and Option, dragging left and right, I'm going to get a nice big brush. And I want to lighten. So I'm going to put white in the foreground. And I'm going to make the opacity 20%. To do that, I just hit the 2 on my keyboard. And I want to help create a path up to our monument. Now I'm going to bring the brightness down to 10%, so I just hit one on my keyboard, 
And I just want to, again, further help this path up. I'm going to get these, this brush a little bit brighter as well. And now I'm going to hit the X key to put black in the foreground and then darken some of these edges. And we'll see what it did in a second. Let's make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to darken this side of the butte and a little bit down here. Now, does it look like we did anything? You can't really tell. But watch when we hide this layer and look at the difference. There's before, there's after. Look how you now have a light path leading. Now, if you think it's a little strong, you have two choices. You can bring the opacity down a little bit. Yeah, maybe that's better. Or you can change overlay to soft light, which is a more gentle version of it. Let's see if we like that better. No, I like the contrast of the overlay, but I'm going to bring it down a little bit just to take a little bit of the heat off of it. That looks good, but we still have our big problem and that's that halo. So how do we get rid of this halo? Okay, here's how you do it. First, I'm, I need to go back to my layer here. And what we're gonna use is the stamp tool or the cloning brush, whichever you like to call it. And we, I'm going to change the blending mode again here from normal to darken. Because watch what happens. Hold down the Alter Option key and select a little bit of sky. Now, since it's set to darken, even if I paint right over top of the, of the monument, watch what happens. It ignores it because it's darker than the sky we're using to paint with. And if I want to draw a straight line, I can click once, hold down the Shift key, come all the way down here. And click and look at that in one fell swoop the halos are gone so we'll come back up top I'll reselect I'm going to click option here and again I just drag across this border I keep hitting reselect so we'll come up there and let's do another one here and that just allows me to completely get rid of this halo. So one there, I'll click shift again, drag down, click once, hold in shift and click, and there we go. Now let's look at that 100%. And now we can hide this and see, look at how that halo is gone. That looks a lot better. Now something we need to realize when we look at an iPhone shot at 100%, it's a little bit soft. So can we do some sharpening on it? Let's find out. So I'm going to create a stack you hold down your, the Option key, click on the three lines which are the Layers menu, click on Merge Visible, and since I'm holding down the Alt key, it keeps all of our other layers intact. Let's see if we can add some sharpening to this. So let's try, under Filter, let's try Smart Sharpen and see how good a job that does. In fact, I'll select from up in here, and if I pick, and I'm going to pick a big number. I'm going to do 280%. Why not? I'm going to make the radius a little bit bigger. Now, I don't want to go over one pixel because that's going to start to bring halos back. Let's do that instead. And if I click on and off, you know what? It's just really not doing that much. So I'm actually going to cancel that. Really, the answer is the image is probably about as sharp as it's going to get. Are there other sharpening tools out there? Yeah, maybe, but it's not sharp to begin with. It looks pretty sharp here in the middle. Let's take a look in here a bit. Let's look at it at 100%. That's not terrible. But is it as sharp as a good DSLR digital camera? No, it's not. But it's an iPhone. It's still pretty good. And if you're going to show images online, stuff like this looks absolutely great. So let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to Command S to just save that. That'll send it right back into Lightroom. Then I'll tab over to Lightroom. Okay, and here's our edited image, as, with I, as I do with most of my images. I'm going to add my minus 12 post-crop vignette. And again, I can hide this, and you can see what it just did. Just puts that little darkening around the edge. And while we're in here in basic, I'm going to add a little more contrast back into the image and maybe increase the exposure just a little bit. And that's really not terrible. So let's see what we've accomplished with our image. I'm going to go back to our original and hit full. There's the original file as we saw it. And remember, when we made our changes, we ended up with a lot of halo around the monument. But by bringing it into Photoshop, we were able to get rid of all that stuff. And here's our iPhone image back from Photoshop back in the Lightroom. So pretty good. 
It's got a lot of great uses. Could you make a, a smallish print of this and it would hold up fine? Sure, maybe even up to, say, 11 by 14, maybe even 11 by 17. But it's going to start to fall apart if you go any, bi any bigger than that. And that's one of the things that separates out the phones, as great as they are, from our cameras. So that's it for today. Next time, I think what we'll do is take a camera image from a similar place and see what we can do with it. And I'll show you how it's going to hold up much better, especially if we want to make a big print. Thanks for joining me today. I wish you a great week and see you next time. Bye-bye.